welcome to another class of process heat transfer. In this lecture, I will explain about the heat transfer by the convection process. I will also explain about the Newton's law of cooling, the dimensionless numbers. I will talk about the convective heat transfer to the fluids without phase change. I will uh, talk about the laminar and the turbulent heat transfer regimes, thermal boundary layers, log mean temperature difference. Um, I will discuss in detail about the heat transfer by the force convection in laminar and the turbulent flows inside and the outside of the tubes. And I will also discuss about the natural convection. At the end, I will discuss about the momentum and the heat transfer in which I will be discussing about the eddies diffusivity of heat and the Reynolds analogy and the Colburn's analogy. The fundamentals of convection. So the basic definition of the convection is the mechanism of heat transfer through a fluid in the presence of bulk fluid motion. So convection is classified as natural or the free convection as well as the force convection depending upon how the fluid motion is initiated. So mainly there are two categories of the convection process. The one is known as the natural convection and the second one is known as the force convection. I will be discussing in detail about both categories of the convection process in the subsequent slides. The physical mechanism of convection. Before going into the details of this diagram, let us just talk about the different uh, modes of heat transfer. There are three basic mechanisms of heat transfer such as conduction, convection and radiation. Conduction and convection are similar in that both mechanisms require the presence of material medium. But they are different in that the convection requires the presence of the fluid motion. Heat transfer through a solid surface or through a solid body is always by the conduction since the molecules of a solid remains at relatively fixed positions. Heat transfer through a liquid or a gas which is simply known as fluids however can be by a conduction or the convection process depending upon the presence of any bulk fluid motion. If the fluid is at rest so the, the heat transfer through a fluid is mainly due to the conduction process. If the fluid mo is in motion and the molecules are moving from one place to another place, the, the heat transfer through a fluid is due to by the convection process. Convection heat transfer is uh, complicated by the fact that it involves the fluid motion as well as the heat conduction. The fluid motion enhances the heat transfer since it brings hotter and the cooler chunks of fluid into contact, initiating the higher rates of conduction at the greater number of sites in a fluid. Therefore, the rate of heat transfer through a fluid is much higher by convection than that is by conduction process. In fact, the higher the velocity of the fluid motion, the higher will be the rate of heat transfer. So in order to understand this concept of uh, heat transfer by the convection process this is this this diagram shows that the force convection as you can see in this diagram that this is a hot plate having a temperature of 15 degrees centigrade and if we blow the air from one direction to another direction and it has a velocity of 5 meter per second and and the temperature is 20 degrees centigrade the process which is simply known as the force convection why we say it is a force convection because we are applying any external means in order to transfer the heat from the solid surface by the convection process the air present at the surface of this plate will be moving with a higher velocity if we apply this fan. The rate of heat transfer will be higher if we apply any external means. Whereas this is the example of free convection. So in this case we have not applied any kind of external external means, fan or any windmill. To, so 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 this this is this is the example of the free convection. So how the free convection will take place? So the basic understanding of the free convection is so consider this is the hot plate so consider this is a hot plate and the air present above the hot plate will get heat from this hot surface or the hot plate and as the temperature of this air will be higher and its density will decrease as the density of the air will decrease so it will rise up so so the hot air or the warmer air will be will be rising and there will be the empty space and this empty space will be covered by the cooler air 
or the cold air which is which will be which will be coming from the other sides so this is the natural phenomena of the convection process so when the heat will be transferred from the plate to the moving fluid which is above the hot plate so due to the higher temperature it will rise up and its place will be covered by the cold air from the surrounding so this is another example of a hot plate in which there is no air currents are there it means that the air is present but the air is not moving with a very high speed so air molecules are still are somewhat still on this hot plate so the the rate or the heat transfer the rate of heat transfer from this hot plate to the air is mainly due to the conduction process as i have said earlier the convection heat transfer is a complicated fact because it involves the fluid motion as well as the heat conduction if the fluid is in motion so mainly the heat transfer will be due to the convection process if the fluid motion is is if the if there is no fluid motion and the fluid is in still still position so the heat transfer will be due to the conduction process to understand the convection process in a better way let us consider the following example in which uh, the steady heat transfer through a fluid uh, contained between two parallel plates which are maintained at at two different temperatures as you can see in this diagram the upper plate is at a temperature of 110 degrees centigrade and the lower plate uh, is maintained at a temperature of 30 degrees centigrade obviously the heat will be transferred from the higher temperature to the lower temperature if the fluid which is present in between the, in, in these two plates if the fluid is in motion so the this heat transfer will mainly be called as the convection process if the fluid is still and it is not moving so the 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 heat transfer from the hot plate to the cold plate is mainly due to by the conduction process so the temperature of the fluid and the plate will be same at the points of contact because of the continuity of the temperature so the fluid which is near to this plate has the same temperature of 110 degrees centigrade and the fluid which is near to this plate will have the same temperature of 30 degree centigrade if there is no fluid motion the energy of the hotter molecules near the hot plate will be transferred to the adjacent cooler fluid molecules this energy will then be transferred to the next layer of the cooler fluid molecules until it it finally transfer it to the other plate at the bottom this is what happens during the conduction through a fluid now let us use a syringe to draw some fluid near the hot plate right and inject it near the cold plate repeatedly you can imagine that this will speed up the heat transfer process considerably since some of the energy is being carried to the other side as a result of the fluid motion here is another example of the convection heat transfer consider this is the hot iron block uh, at the temperature of 400 degrees centigrade so the heat transfer within the block will be mainly due to by the conduction process so the heat transfer uh, from the block to the surrounding will be mainly due to the convection process so consider uh, the air which is flowing or the blowing in this direction from left to right at the speed of uh, 3 meter per second and at the temperature of 15 degrees centigrade so it means that the surrounding air has a temperature uh, has the less temperature compared to the temperature of the block so it means that the heat will flow from the block to the surrounding air so this moving air will carry the amount of heat which is being transferred from this hot block to the surrounding air so if we increase the speed so it means that the the rate of uh, convection process or the rate of heat transfer through the convection process will increase so it means that uh, the velocity of the fluid which is uh, flowing above the hot block has a significant effect on the convection process so if we replace this air uh, with the water or any liquid medium so so the rate of heat transfer will be increased compared to the air so this will be the velocity profile as you can see that the velocity of the air near the hot block will be less 
compared to the velocity away from the surface this will be known as the velocity profile so the the layer of the air which is adjacent to the flock adjacent to the block will have the approximately zero velocity and as we move away from the block the velocity of the air will be higher and higher so the convection process the rate of heat transfer through the convection process will be mainly depends will mainly depends upon uh, several parameters that is the dynamic viscosity of the fluid which is moving above uh, the hot surface and the thermal conductivity as well as the density of the air the specific heat capacity the fluid velocity and it also depends upon the geometry and the roughness of the solid surface in addition to the type of fluid flows such as the streamline flow or the turbulent flow so the flows are basically classified into two categories the streamline flow and the turbulent flow i will be discussing about the streamline flow and the turbulent flow and how it will affect the rate of heat transfer in the convection process uh, i will be discussing this type of uh, uh, phenomena in the upcoming slides newton's law of cooling this is one of the important laws that will be explained by the newton and it will be discussing about the rate of heat transfer by the convection process so the rate of convection heat transfer is observed to be proportional to the temperature difference and is conveniently expressed by the newton's law of cooling and newton's law of cooling can be expressed in two different ways right the first equation as you can see that this is uh, represented by a small q dot and it is basically the heat transfer rate per unit surface area and it it has a unit of watt per meter square right so this will be also known as the heat flux right and it will be equal to uh, the uh, the heat transfer coefficient convective heat transfer coefficient multiplied by the temperature difference uh, we have already discussed about the newton's law of cooling in our previous lectures so we can also uh, express the newton's law of cooling uh, by this second equation and if, if you can see that there is the surface area right so if we divide this surface area by this q we will have the same equation as the first equation so in in these equation h will be known as the convective heat transfer coefficients and as is the heat transfer surface area in meter square ts is the surface temperature of a solid body and the t infinity is the temperature of the fluid sufficiently far from the surface mainly in degree centigrade when a fluid is forced to flow over a solid surface that is non porous what does it mean the fluid cannot penetrate or infiltrate into the solid it is observed that the fluid in motion comes to a completely stop at the surface and assumes a zero velocity relative to the surface so if the fluid is moving in this direction and with a velocity v so we can say that the the fluid layer which is adjacent to this solid block will have the zero velocity as we move away from the surface so the velocity of the fluid layer will be increasing so this will be the velocity profile this will be the velocity profile as you can see uh, where my pointer is moving so this is the velocity profile of the fluid which is moving above the solid surface the fluid layer in direct contact with the solid solid surface sticks to the surface and there is no slip no slip means the fluid layer which is adjacent or which is in contact with the solid surface is not slipping away so so it means that uh, there is no slip between the fluid layer which is adjacent to the solid surface so this phenomena is known as the no slip condition and it is due to the velocity of the fluid as you can see in this diagram so no slip condition means uh, the simply the the fluid layer which is uh, adjacent to the surface has a zero velocity the no slip condition is responsible for the development of the velocity profile for the fluid flow because of the friction between the fluid layers the layer that sticks to the wall zero velocity and obviously there is the friction between the layers of the fluid 
so this layer which is adjacent to the fluid surface has a zero velocity due to the friction it will slightly reduce the velocity of the other layer a similar phenomenon occurs for the case of temperatures when two bodies at two different temperatures are brought into contact heat transfer occurs until both bodies assumes the same temperature at the point of contact therefore a fluid or the solid surface will have the same temperature at the point of contact this condition is simply known as no temperature jump condition so at this point the fluid layer and the solid block will have the same temperature and this this point is known as no slip condition because the velocity is zero and the no temperature jump condition because the layer the fluid layer which is adjacent to the solid block has the same temperature and these two conditions are simply known as no slip conditions and the no temperature jump condition an implication of the no slip and the no temperature jump condition is that the heat transfer from the solid surface to the fluid layer adjacent to the surface is mainly by the conduction process or purely by the conduction process since the fluid layer the adjacent fluid layer is motionless and it can be expressed by this equation so the conduction or the convection is mainly be expressed by the con conduction and formula for the heat conduction is simply the Fourier's law of heat conduction at y is equal to zero y is equal to zero means at the surface of the solid body consider this horizontal plane is x-axis and the vertical plane is y-axis so from the solid surface so y is equal to zero means at the start of the y-axis so at the start of the y-axis the convection and the conduction will be equal to the Fourier's law of heat conduction where t represents the temperature distribution in the fluid and this parameter del t by del y at y is equal to zero is the temperature gradient at the surface this heat is then convected away from a surface as a result of the fluid motion note that the convection heat transfer from a solid surface to a fluid is mainly by the conduction heat transfer from the solid surface to the fluid layer which is adjacent to the solid surface so in this equation if we can substitute the uh, the newton's law of cooling expression into this equation and uh, we can uh, uh, develop this expression in order to calculate the convective heat transfer coefficient when the temperature distribution within the fluid is known it means that uh, the surface temperature is known and the the fluid temperature which is far away from the surface is also known the thermal conductivity of the fluid is known the temperature distribution is also known so we can calculate the average or the mean convective heat transfer coefficient from this expression and it has a unit of watt per meter square per degree centigrade classification of fluid flows convection heat transfer is closely tied with the fluid mechanics which is the science that deals with the behavior of fluids at rest or in motion and the interaction of fluids with solids or with other fluids at the boundaries there are wide variety of fluid flow problems encountered in practice and it is usually convenient to classify them on the basis of some common characteristics to make it feasible to study them in the groups there are many ways to classify the fluid flow problems and below we are going to present some of the general categories first of all the first category is the viscous versus the inviscid flow so when the two fluid layers move relative to each other a friction force develops between them and the slower layer tries to slow down the faster layer this internal resistance of flow is called the viscosity which is a measure of internal stickness of the fluid viscosity is caused by the cohesive forces or the intermolecular forces between the molecules in the liquid and by the molecular collision in the gases there is no fluid with zero viscosity and thus all the fluids involves the viscous effects to some degrees Flu flows in which the effects of viscosities are significant are called the viscous fluids it means that the fluids which are difficult to flow are called the viscous flows the simplest example is honey or mayonnaise or the toothpaste the effects of viscosities are very are very small in some flows and uh, neglecting those effects generally simplifies the analysis without much loss in accuracy uh, 
such idealized flow of zero viscosity of the fluids are called the frictionless or the inviscid flows some fluids are have very very low viscosity and those fluids are simply known as inviscid flows the simplest example is the mercury which has a very very small or the less viscosity so a second category of uh, the classification of fluid flows is internal and the external flows a fluid flow is classified as being internal or external depending upon whether the fluid is forced to flow in a confined channel or on the open surface the flow of an unbound fluid over a flat plate or over a flat surface or any other wire or a pipe the the the, the that kind of flow will be known as the external flow the fluid flow whereas in a pipe or in a duct will be considered as the internal flow if the fluid is completely bounded by the solid surface so the simplest example is the water which is flowing in a pipe uh, is the classified example of the internal flow whereas if the air is flowing over the pipe which is uh, the the simplest example which is given here is the example of external flow or the open channel flow water flows in a pipe for example is an internal flow and the air which is uh, flowing over the exposed pipe which is uh, uh, you can see in this diagram during a windy day is an external flow example as you can see in this diagram the flow of a liquid in a pipe is called the open channel flow if the pipe is partially filled with the liquid and there is some free space this is called the open channel flow and the flow of water in the rivers and the irrigation ditches are some some examples of the open channel flows a third category of the classification of the flows is the compressible versus the incompressible flow so a fluid flow which is classified as being compressible or incompressible it is mainly dependent upon the density variation of the fluid flow during the motion the densities of the liquid are essentially constant and the flow of the liquid is typically incompressible therefore the liquids are usually classified as incompressible substances so for example a pressure of let's say 200 atm for example will cause the density of the liquid of water at 1 atm to change only 1% so whereas on the other hand gases uh, which are highly compressible so if we we can apply the pressure the gases will be compressed and its density will be changed therefore the gas flows can be treated as incompressible if the density changes are under about 5% which is usually the case when the flow velocity is less than 30% the velocity of the sound in that gas the velocity of the sound in the air at the room temperature is about 346 m per second therefore the compressibility affects the air can be neglected at the speed of under 100 m per second note that the flow of a gas is not necessarily a compressible but it it mainly depends upon the external conditions the applied pressure and uh, the fluid velocity etc so the next category of the classification of the fluid is the laminar flow as well as the turbulent flow as i have already said in the previous slide that this topic is or uh, this lecture is mainly discussing about the laminar and the turbulent flow and there are subsequent effects on the heat transfer so some flows are smooth and orderly while the other fluid flows are chaotic and they are random so highly ordered fluid motion characterized by the smooth streamlines and the this this kind of flow is simply called the laminar flow and the flow of high velocity fluids such as oil at very low velocity is typically laminar so the the simplest example is when you pour the honey from the bottle to the plate so so it will be the classified example of the laminar flow so the highly disordered fluid motion that is typically occurs at very high velocities characterized by the velocity fluctuations and this kind of flow will be known as the turbulent flow the flow of the low viscosity fluids such as air at a very high velocities is typically known as the turbulent the flow regimes such as laminar flow regime or the turbulent flow regimes will mainly influence the heat transfer rates and the the power which is required for the pumping process
the next category is known as the natural or unforced versus the force flow so a fluid flow is said to be the natural or the force flow depending upon how the fluid motion is initiated for example in the force flow a fluid is forced to flow over a flat plate or over a surface or in a pipe by means of external devices such as by a pump or by a fan whereas in case of natural flows any fluid motion is due to a natural means such as buoyancy effect which manifests itself as the rise of the warmer fluid and the fall of the cooler fluid this thermosiphoning effect is commonly used to replace the pumps in solar water heating system as you can see in this diagram by placing the water tank sufficiently above the solar collectors so the fluid which is the cold fluid or the denser fluid which is coming here and it will collect the heat from the solar radiation and uh, after getting the heat its density it, it will get warmer and uh, the hot fluid will be moving upward and the hot water will be collected from the upper surface so the cold water which is coming in the same tank at the bottom place will move from the lower surface towards the solar collectors in order to get hot or in order to collect the heat and this cycle is continuous process and it, it, it moves on and so on the next category is the steady versus the unsteady and also known as the transient flow the term steady or the uniforms are usually or frequently used in engineering and it is important to have the clear understanding of the steady process or the unsteady process the term steady means that there is no change with respect to the time and uh, the unsteady means there is the change with respect to the time so uh, clearly keep in mind that the steady means there is no change or we are not considering the time effect so in case of unsteady or the transient we are considering uh, the effect of time so the term uniform however implies that there is no change with the location over a specified region many devices such as turbines compressors condensers boilers and the heat exchangers operate for a longer period for a longer period of time under the same conditions and they are classified as steady flow devices during the steady flow the fluid properties uh, can be changed from point to point within the device but at any fixed point they remain constant so the last category of the classification of the fluid flows is the one dimensional two dimensional and the three dimensional flows so if the fluid is moving uh, on if the fluid is moving on a flat plate so we can consider uh, the rectangular coordinates the rectangular coordinates has three three dimensions like x y and z directions so if the fluid is moving freely so we can assume that the fluid is moving in all directions so so it is a three dimensional fluids so in order to in order to study uh, the fluid motion in a particular direction we assume uh, uh, the fluid on a rectangular plate uh, the fluid is moving in, in x directions and we will see in upcoming slide that we will only consider the fluid motion in only one dimension and uh, the motion in other dimensions such as y and z directions uh, will be negligible so so we can consider the fluid motion in in rectangular coordinates as well as in the cylindrical coordinates and in the cylindrical coordinates as you can see the fluid uh, motion in the pipe or or the motion of any fluid such as air or the liquid flowing through the pipe has certain uh, uh, dimensions such as uh, we can say that uh, on in, in the rectangular coordinates we have three directions or three dimensions like x y and z and in the cylindrical coordinates we have also three directions uh, dimensions like uh, the z which is known as which is known as the axial direction and the radial direction and the third is known as uh, at a particular angle which is known as also which is also and the third is the theta direction which is at certain angle so for the sake of understanding uh, we will just consider the one dimensional flow in this uh, course of process heat transfer such as the example is given that the fluid is moving in only z direction but its velocity is changing in the radial direction as you can see that at the center the fluid 
has the maximum velocity but it's the its velocity is changing along the radius so this is all about the classification of fluid flows